he will be farther away uh, from the mean than the more accurate users. So he will get smaller weight. And then this will be amplified when you keep cycling. Yeah? OK? Yes? Well, that's a very good question. Yeah, so, so I suggest if you like, if you have variances, but that is your very good question. That's exactly what we want to see. So what do we do? We run a simulation because we are computer scientists, right? So let's run an implementation of this algorithm and see. That's the the. Crucial question. If I know the variances and I compute maximum likelihood estimation, and if I don't know the variances by I kind of iteratively estimate them, will this guy be as good as the guy that uh, knows true variances? So let's see how the thing. Uh, behaves. So, uh, let us quickly but I think you got the gist. The idea is very simple, just uh, iteratively. That is the So here we have a bunch of sensors okay, that measure temperature. C 
So uh, we have 25 sensors uh, and that uh, measure at 288 uh, um, uh, in time instance. So this is uh, uh, one reading about every five minutes during 24 hour period. So this is what the temperature approximately looks like. Uh, around noon, uh, you achieve the peak, and uh, sometimes, I guess around midnight, you have the trough, right? And this is a 24-hour uh, period. And uh, we are now, uh, let us first uh, do uh, the following. We will choose uh, variances of the sensors uh, uh, randomly in the interval between uh, 1 and uh, 5. Uh, so this will result uh, in uh, something that looks like this. Sorry, this is not choosing the variance, but choosing the standard uh, is, uh, deviation. So the variance will be squared. So you can see here, some sensors have very small variance, 1.6 or 1.61, but some have more than 20 <coughs> variants just to make it easier to see what's happening. <coughs> so then what we do, to true values, we will add uh, a randomly produced noise, right, with the corresponding variances. So this will be, um, this is the index of the sensor, and this is the timestamp of the measurement of out of 298. So, and then uh, you produce the temperature by adding to the uh, true temperature the uh, random normally distributed error of uh, each sensor. Um, okay, this is irrelevant here. This is just, uh, uh, I don't know why I have that. Okay, TS1 is the noisy signal, and TS is a true signal. Uh, SG is just the table of all temperatures. And then we produce uh, uh, readings to be, uh, actually, I don't use this at all, TS1, because I Use readings to be um, T n plus T s y is uh, um, so I have to see what have I done here. So T n is the noise. T I we don't need the T s one at all. This is left over from some past experiments. Okay. Uh, so the readings are obtained by adding to true values uh, Ts, the noise, uh, Tn, and you can see uh, first and last sensors, uh, what, do they, what they uh, look like. Um, and you can see, let's say join equals true. just to see it better. So you can see um, the yellow one has larger variance because this is uh, uh, one that corresponds to the variance 23. And maybe it's the best if we see one and two, right? Because uh, uh, they, you see one of them has obviously much lower variance, the blue one, and the orange one has much higher uh, variance. Now if we compute the maximum likelihood estimation. So what is this? Uh, the error of maximum likelihood estimation is, uh, let's uh, just look out here. So this is, uh, uh, so this is just a scalar product. This is a uh, yeah, you know, mathematical threads to through the lists. So this will multiply a reciprocal 
of each variance of each sensor times the readings of the sensor uh, divided by uh, some total of uh, reciprocal. So this is precisely the maximum likelihood estimation. This is the true value. And uh, because, uh, OK, the norm means uh, some of the squares. Uh, so um, the error is the mean of the, you can just imagine that this is inside the square root. Uh, actually, you know what? This is not correct. I should have taken square root of the, so this will be the, to compute the variance. Uh, uh, the, the, the error. Uh, let's see, this will be, am I passing it? Ah, here. Uh, so this is, uh, yeah, something is. Uh, uh, so you can see this is the estimate, and this is, so I guess I don't need the. Uh, this square root of the number of instances if I am looking at the cumulative error. But I guess I did it everywhere. So let's keep it at this normalization square root. But it's, it should be over PT, but uh, let's see. Uh, the mean error, right? Mean square error without the root. Let me just see how I compute the errors. Uh, Yeah, everywhere I compute with a square root of tt, and I don't know why this is, this should be just a tt. So let's change it everywhere consistently. Uh, so this will be tt. Okay, now this uh, uh, script implements two types of iterative filtering algorithms, uh, but I'll ignore the second one. Um, uh, here is the the one that I just presented. In fact, uh, let me uh, uh, remove, uh, okay, let's just ignore uh, the second one uh, and uh, just uh, uh, run, uh, pay attention to the first one. So let's run the, the script and see what we get. Okay, so here it is. Um, uh, I think I did not uh, change the, um, okay, so here it is, uh, should be TT also, this one, so this will not, yeah, now this is, but where is error best? Let's see, error best probably still has a, a square root. That is the error of the best answer. Which one is the best? Line 40. Sorry? The 41. The line 40. Uh, so. Uh, 40, 40, yeah. 40? Yeah. So it should be. So this is. Uh, um, just uh, let me see. Which is the best? Okay, well, let's it's do it uh, manually. Uh, Which one is the best? Yes. It is. Aha, uh, uh -huh. yes, yes, yes. Error best. Ah, so we have to divide it by. Um, ah, this is why, because I took uh, root mean square. So this is why I have. Uh, okay, yeah. So let's take, uh, instead of this, uh, let's take norm.
and then divide it by uh, TT uh, to make it consistent. Okay, divide by TT. And if we do this, uh, let's see what we get at the end. But, uh, here. Okay, very good. Uh, so ignore and, uh, and uh, the, um, this is what you get. Uh, this is uh, the estimation, maximum likelihood estimation. This is the best sensor. Notice this guy is uh, about three times bigger than this one. So if you took the most accurate sensor, you would get three times as large error. And look at this guy, iterative, to answer your question. In this setup, this guy produced almost, uh, in fact, produced an estimate that is the, on a par with the maximum likelihood estimation. So how, uh, let's just make sure that you understand the script. It's, uh, uh, it's very simple um, implementation of the, uh, iterative filtering algorithm you will see here um, you simply uh, compute uh, so the weight is uh, obtained as G of the distances uh, and what is G? G is just reciprocal here right so it's exactly um, uh, and then we take uh, add new estimates to be uh, weighted sum of uh, the readings with weights that are obtained uh, um, uh, through as a reciprocal of the distance. And distance is just uh, uh, this uh, um, mean value of the uh, norm squared, right? Uh, to just, uh, why did I do? This is, uh, this shouldn't be squared because norm already squares it. Okay, uh, this uh, script is totally buggy. I'm going to double check it. Uh, I think uh, uh, you do not need to square this. Let's see how it will run uh, with just uh, this. I think it should not be square because uh, square. Uh, what's happening now? Okay. So, let us see what we get. Um, yeah. So you see, it is about. Of course, in each run you get slightly uh, different, but is comparable to. Uh, the maximum likelihood uh, estimation, right? And then here, it's again squared for some reason that I was obviously asleep, but this is for with the affine function, so uh, that's for the third one. Okay, so it looks like it. This iterative filtering algorithm produces uh, the same quality estimator as the theoretically optimal one, the maximum likelihood estimation. Okay, I suggest strongly implement this algorithm in your favorite uh, language, just to make sure you understand, uh, because Mathematica, of course, has its idiosyncrasies. Uh, uh, it's a very high level language, so just follow the algorithm as described and implement it in Python or whatever is now your favorite language. Now, it looks <coughs> that uh, to answer your question, that in fact uh, this iterative algorithm produces the best, theoretically the best estimate, but let's run another experiment. Uh, instead of uh, randomly 
choosing the variances or standard deviation, which we do here, let's comment it out. And uh, let's take standard deviation to be monotonically increasing uh, function. Uh, this is just anything that keeps in a reasonable range. You can put here whatever you please that is monotonically increasing. Uh, and let's uh, run it um, the same algorithm once again and let's see what we get. Uh, so we produce the random noise um, and uh, you can see here the, how the variance is, is distributed. The first sensor has the smallest variance and the last sensor has the largest variance. Let's see what performance the algorithm now has. Uh, uh, now, uh, gee, that's, uh, uh, it is, uh, is happening here, I must have messed up something because, well, maybe we run it once again. Um, because what is supposed to happen is uh, that the algorithm doesn't perform well at all. Strangely enough, uh, it does. Uh, that's because probably I did something. Uh, let's see what happens if I increase this just to be uh, square root i. Sorry, I should have tested this uh, uh, script. I haven't. Let's see what we get now. Gee, it is. Uh, okay, I'll tell you what. I'm going to uh, check the code, but I will explain why is it now. Um, why let me see again. So. Maybe I, I messed it up if I removing the, the norm. Oh, of course, the norm takes square root. Oh, man. Uh, this is when uh, you don't well. Let me see. Now, let me. I don't think it's mathematical. You see, norm involves a square root. This is why. In fact, uh, I do need the, the squares that I foolishly uh, removed. Uh, so let us, uh, you see, if you are as careless as I am, uh, what do you do when you ruin your perfectly good file? Well, uh, let's see. So 
me about this. Uh, um, what's the estimate? So uh, shortly after this algorithm appeared uh, uh, and appeared in a, of all places of uh, physics, I think physics letters, uh, um, uh, uh, two guys uh, published another version of iterative filtering algorithm that instead of this weight, it used the following, so what is uh,
So uh, for this algorithm, the weights are 1 over the variance of sensor i, and this is bad, right? Instead, you can use the following max of vi, when i is between 1 and n, or say j, uh, v j minus vi. So this is the weight for the i sensor. So <coughs> notice this will give weight 0 to the one with the largest variance. <coughs> and then larger the variance, smaller the weight. Right? So instead of this, in this formula, right, you would have uh, um, this uh, weight uh, maximal, uh, the largest of the variances minus the variance of, the, of that particular sensor. Um, <coughs> of course, you normalize uh, vi, you set it equal vi divided by sum of vi to, um, to get them all uh, to sum up to 1. What do you think? Uh, what is the problem with this weight? Of course, singularity disappears. Uh, but what do you think? What's the problem with this weight? Uh, yes? You disregard the variances. <coughs> you disregard only the largest variance. Uh, but this is susceptible. What happens? Uh, if you have lots of good raters uh, and one very bad with large variance, uh, what will be this be? Because this will be large, and all of these, uh, except that the largest one, will be small. All of the weights to good raters will be equal. So this will collapse to a simple mean, right? So this is the reason <coughs> why uh, we try to do better. And next time, I'll show you uh, in simulations also um, how our <coughs> weight performs um, and how robust it is against uh, the attacks. You see, here we all assume that the errors are stochastic. But in practice, it's uh, important to look at the, uh, the cases where the errors are not stochastic, but when there is uh, a collusion attack against the system, right? If, uh, uh, say, in sensor networks, if an adversary uh, hijacks a few sensors and manipulates the readings and uh, tries to screw the uh, uh, the, the, the aggregate estimate, uh, and we will see how our system performs. But uh, it's still work in progress uh, because last year one of the students uh, discovered the weak point uh, uh, in that system as well. Uh, so it's a lot for you to kind of play with uh, how to weigh measurements to produce optimal. Uh, estimate of the true value and applications obviously can be <coughs> very large. Uh, for example, this you can use uh, to aggregate stock market uh, estimations uh, where uh, the outcomes are not just uh, sell, strong sell, buy, and whatever, only five of them, but when the predictions are actually uh, numerical continuous values like what will be the stock price. Uh, so this allows you to robustly aggregate uh, um, continuous time uh, quantities. Okay, so I'm sorry, I should have uh, tested my code. Let's stop here. I'll clean up the code for Tuesday and then uh, we will go. Uh, please uh, read the, uh, the lecture notes. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this uh, topic uh, leaves you a lot of opportunity to uh, play with and apply it. We applied it on all sorts of uh, uh, 
in all sorts of setups uh, uh, pretty successfully. And after we finish with that, we will move to recommender systems. Uh, Okay, uh, uh, when it comes to your project, uh, what I expect is on the size approximately one chapter from the book. Uh, there will be no detailed specs. You pick what interests you the most and you consult with me to, de to determine that this is appropriate. Uh, and, uh, uh, but you have kind of a uh, freestyle uh, project to do something that is really of uh, interest to you rather than just a homework. 